we look at the label of any of their products, we can see there's seven grams of added sugar, but there's no sweeteners on the ingredient list. So where are these added sugars coming from? Well, in the production process, they add natural enzymes to break down the oat starch into smaller components like maltose. And maltose is a sugar that has a glycemic index of 105. And just for comparison, regular cane sugar has a glycemic index of 50. Well, it looks like this guy just watched my last video and then decided to turn it into a scary fear-mongering video about oat milk. All right, so I explained in my last video how Oatly has seven grams of sugar, seven grams of added sugar, even though there are not any apparent added sugars on the label. And that is because the oats are put through a process called hydrolysis, which breaks up the longer chain carbohydrates into shorter chain carbohydrates or sugars. So that converts the carbohydrates into mostly maltose and glucose. Now maltose is just two glucose molecules and glucose is just one glucose molecule. So sugar, which he's comparing it to sucrose, is glucose and fructose. Yes, these are going to have a different glycemic index, but that's not very meaningful to most people unless you are somebody with diabetes or something. So sucrose, which is what he was comparing it to, gets broken down in your body into fructose and glucose and maltose gets broken down into glucose. And this is what our body uses for energy. So the oat flour is put through this hydrolysis process to make it more soluble in water. And otherwise those starches would be broken down into sugars in our body. It would be broken down into glucose in our body anyways, and we would use that for energy. It's almost like he's trying to make the argument that it'd be better if sucrose was added to it when that's not the case at all. It's just glucose instead of sucrose. So then of course he goes on to talk about the dipotassium phosphate, which is just adding phosphorus and potassium to the product. And too much phosphorus can be harmful to people with kidney disease, kidney failure, but for most of us, it's fine and our bodies require a certain amount of phosphorus to function. It actually even lists the amount of phosphorus in here, so it's 270 milligrams, which is 20% of the daily value of phosphorus. The tolerable upper intake level for most people is 3,000 to 4,000 milligrams per day. So obviously this is nowhere near a harmful level for most people. And finally, the last claim. So they add some low quality vitamins like vitamin D2 so they can say their milk is actually neutral. Right, so obviously this is contributing to the vitamin D on the label, so you can get vitamin D in supplement form in the form of vitamin D2 or vitamin D3. The D2 version is from plants, it's more readily available in higher quantities, and it allows this to be vegan. You see how these people can take something that's not scary at all and turn it into something sounding really scary that you should avoid? Just please stop listening to these people. I know their videos get a lot of attention, but they have no clue what they're talking about when it comes to food and nutrition.